instead of acknowledging Shri Sanjay Yadav. He's not there. Shri Sanjay Yadav. Shri Birendra Prasad Bashya. Shri Birendra Prasad Bashya. Shri Milan Murali Diora. You have five minutes, sir. Thanks for the uh, time from the uh, Honorable Parliamentary Affairs Minister from the BJP's time. They have they've agreed to give me some time. Time, time is very flexible. Ma'am, I would like to give you a thank you for giving me this budget. Because the time is very कम है मैं अपना भाषण सरकार के जो महत्वपूर्ण सुझाव मैं देना चाहूंगा बहुत ही पॉइंटेड सजेशंस देना चाहूंगा ड्यूरिंग द मोशन ऑफ थैंक्स स्पीच ऑल ऑफ अस स्पोक ऑन वेरियस इश्यूज व्हिच वर वेरी पॉलिटिकल इन नेचर आई वुड लाइक टू बी वेरी स्पेसिफिक ऑन इश्यूज गोइंग बियॉन्ड पॉलिटिक्स एंड गिविंग सम वेरी वैल्यूएबल सजेशंस टू द फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री ऑन इश्यूज दैट कंसर्न एवरीबॉडी इन दिस हाउस for one, in my opinion, I firmly believe that every expenditure, incentive, subsidy of the government of India should be directed towards one goal of achieving three very, very important objectives. The first objective is to create as much employment as possible and to onshore jobs that were lost to China and to bring them to India. I believe that the day of the day is such a day that the whole of the day will be in the whole of the day in the whole of the day. Everybody wants to ensure we get the youth of India employed as quickly as possible. The second strategic objective for India, in my opinion, is to rework our supply chains and again reduce our dependence on countries that can become hostile towards us. The third very crucial objective is while achieving and solving the unemployment problem, while reworking and bringing supply chains to India, simultaneously greening our economy. People have spoken about, in the budget as well, in the economic survey, about how supply chains are being brought back. Today, ma'am, world over, the Western countries that for the last two or three decades moved their manufacturing to a country like China are now adopting what is called the China plus one strategy. They are adding countries like India to their manufacturing mix. They are also adopting something called ABC, anywhere but China. And this is why I am You can't, you can't, you know you can't. Don't, don't distract. No, no, time is, uh, ma'am, Dave, uh, Mr. Jeju, my limited point is bringing manufacturing to India is very, very crucial. I believe that the PLIs, even yesterday in television debates, even some members of the opposition praised PLIs. PLIs or production-linked incentives today, statistics aside, if you look at one important example, a company like Apple, which manufactures, manufactures iPhones, today 14% of Apple's global production, worth $14 billion, is happening in India thanks to production-linked incentives. Therefore, suggestion number one, we must direct production-linked incentives to industries that create the maximum amount of employment. I also congratulate this government for various initiatives that have led to the increase of women in the workforce. As a woman, you will also appreciate from 23% seven years ago, today the number of women in our workforce has gone up to 37%. People spoke about competitive federalism. I also believe this is very, very critical. The more the competition between states, the more India will become competitive globally. Artificial intelligence, data revolution is another area we need to focus on. I believe if we use incentives in the right direction, we can create indigenous capabilities in artificial intelligence, and we can also green our economy. The green transition, Bhupendra Yadavji is here. 
I would like to say that while India's goal is to become net zero by 2070, how we use these incentives to benefit industries like offshore wind energy, green data centers, will be a game changer. I'm also glad that the finance minister spoke about investing in small modular reactors. Nuclear energy is an area we should all be open-minded about. Every country in the world, from Western countries to China, to green their economy, are increasingly now going nuclear. In fact, one eye-opening statistic, by 2035, China will double its share of nuclear power and electricity generation, and by 2060, it will reach almost 20%. A very good example of that is a country called Sweden. 30 years ago, they began greening their economy. Everyone said, you'll lose jobs. In three decades, they've reduced their carbon emissions by 80%, and they've also grown their economy twofold. Ma'am, few quick suggestions. One is, I come from Mumbai, which is the financial commercial capital of this country. Today, increasingly, young people, some of whom who have no idea about, have no investing experience, are increasingly investing in the FNO, future and options segment of the Indian stock market. SEBI, which is the regulator, has made repeated warnings that nine out of 10 trades will lose money. I believe a better way to incentivize people to invest for the long term and not to become day traders is to reduce the long-term capital gains. One suggestion that I would give to this government and to the Honorable Finance Minister, LTCG or long-term capital gains have been increased from 10 to 12.5%. I would urge the Finance Minister to review that. An important point I would like to make again about Mumbai. I would like to make Maharashtra ki aur se government of India aur khas karke cabinet committee ko bahut bahut dhanyawad dena chahta hu ki government of India ne 76000 crore rupees ka vadhavan port ko manjuri di hai this will be an economic game changer for maharashtra for the mumbai metropolitan region but i would like to say that today gift city in gujarat is growing well we are all very happy about it but i firmly believe that today india has the depth to have another international finance center in a city like Mumbai. This is very important for us to understand that cities like Mumbai and GIFT are not competing against Bengaluru or against Hyderabad or against Chennai. Our competition is Dubai to the west and Singapore to the east. One last point, very quickly. We talk about investments, we talk about statistics, we are talking about creating jobs. I want to give one very good example. In the last few years, and I've seen this with my own eyes in the last few months. And my Maharashtra government ke mukhya mantri, my upa mukhya mantri ko badhai dena chahunga, my home minister ko badhai dena chahunga. Gad Chiroli was a Nexel hotbed. Today, because of the efforts of the government of India and the state government, recently a Bhumi Pujan was done for a 10,000 cross steel project which will bring 7,000 jobs to Gad Chiroli. It's very easy to talk about development. It's very easy to talk about creating jobs. But how you actually implement it is very important. Ma'am, these are my limited suggestions. I was hoping to give more suggestions. But I hope the finance minister will take these suggestions up. One is LTG, LTCG. Second is Mumbai. The third is, again, to use all our incentives, expenditures, subsidies to achieve three primary objectives, creating jobs, reworking our supply chains, and greening our economy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah.